Today, some of the largest land predators are the big cats, the biggest of which are the tigers and lions. They are considered apex predators, and their position at the top of the food chain keeps everything else in the ecosystem in check. Without these big cats, prey species such as antelope and deer would proliferate, wreaking havoc on the vegetation, and other animals that rely on the likes of grasses and foliage. The loss of vegetation from overgrazing across the African savanna would turn the regions into deserts. Changes to predator populations would be felt far and wide. Predator kills provide for many other species, such as the scavengers and carrion eaters like hyenas and vultures, not to mention the vast array of invertebrates that benefit from the carcasses as well. Similarly, deer and wild boar populations in the Russian Far East would soar if tigers were to become extinct. This would also have a detrimental effect further down the food chain, and the ecosystems would become weaker as a result. The big cats are important to the ecosystems in which they exist. So, if canids were to be just as big, what impact would they have? They would probably be just as important as the big cats, although there are clear differences between wild dogs and wild cats. The role of apex predators is evident across many different niches and ecosystems. In relation to the felids, canids are not nearly as big. The gray wolf is the largest canid alive today. They measure 105 to 160 centimeters, or 41 to 63 inches in length, and stand 80 to 85 centimeters, or 31 to 33 inches at the shoulder. They weigh around 40 kilograms, or 88 pounds. In comparison, Siberian tigers weigh more than 200 kilograms, or 440 pounds. Although canids are also apex predators in their environment, they haven't reached the huge sizes of their feline counterparts. But the canids, like wolves, coyotes, wild dogs, and foxes, weren't always small. Some of their ancestors were considerably larger. Over time, it seems evolution has been selected for smaller body sizes when it comes to wild dogs. One of the largest canids to have lived was called Epicyon. It was native to North America between the early and late Miocene. It lived alongside the likes of the prehistoric bear, Agriotherium, the lion-sized false saber-toothed cat, Barbarophelids, and the smaller canid Borophagus. These carnivorous species would have likely competed with each other. Their habitat and their prey overlapped, so there would have been conflict. Today, the canids are much smaller and even include the fennec fox, which is just 24 centimeters or 9.4 inches long. But what impact would they have on the ecosystem if they grew to the size of lions or tigers? Firstly, giant canids would likely compete with other big carnivores in their habitat. In many parts of the world, the niches of multiple apex predators overlap. In North America and Canada, large gray wolves may threaten black, brown, and polar bears. In fact, near Hudson Bay in northeastern Canada, Packs of wolves have been observed hunting down polar bear cubs. Scientists have discovered that wolves have learned this behavior, and taking on young polar bears is more common than first thought. If the wolves were much larger, then they would pose a significant threat to polar bear populations, as both species would be fighting for survival in the frozen north. Other predators they may threaten would be black and brown bears, and in Russia, the Siberian tigers. Large canids would compete with these other large predators in the ecosystem. This already happens in parts of the world where there is more than one apex predator in the same habitat. On the African continent, there would be considerable competition between lions, cheetahs, and leopards if the canids were much larger. As it is, jackals, wild dogs, and foxes like the fennec and bat-eared foxes pose little to no threat to other carnivores on the Great African Plains. Often hyenas, which neither belong to the cat family nor the dog family, compete with lions for a kill. Both species carry out infanticide on the other's young as a way of reducing the threat to their own. If African canids were as big as the lions, then either the felines or the canines would become extinct due to the competition, or their behaviors would change to accommodate each other. Behavioral changes can include a range of things. There might be spatial separation between the two types of animals, with one predator living in the African plains and the other in the dense bush. In other parts of the world, geographical separation could be in the form of altitude, with some species living on mountainous slopes and others in the valleys. In Africa, 
lions and leopards coexist, and there doesn't seem to be any spatial or temporal differences in their ranges, except for leopards preferring more densely vegetated habitat and lions more open space. Lions are the more dominant species and pose a threat to leopards, but there is no effect of lions' presence on leopard populations. Although this shows that different predators can inhabit the same habitat, lions are more likely to target larger prey than leopards due to their bigger body size and group hunting strategy, so they can each take advantage of different prey. But if both giant felines and canines existed, then prey would likely be seriously affected. Having too many predators in the same area can wreak havoc on the ecosystem. Overkill of prey species would threaten the survival of the predators themselves. In the past, competition has led to changes such as feeding behavior. Some predominantly carnivorous species have increased their foraging behavior. Bears have survived mass extinction events in the past due to their dietary plasticity. Not only do they consume meat, but they also eat grasses, sedges, roots, and berries. Having a wide and varied diet makes a species less susceptible to environmental change. It's the more specialist feeders that are the most prone to extinction. Having competition can also change the physical characteristics of some animals. Coyotes during the last ice age were much larger than today's coyotes. Back then, they lived alongside dire wolves, American lions, and saber-toothed cats. So having a larger body size was an advantage, allowing them to compete for food. When the large predators became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene, competition with coyotes was no longer evident, and the species became smaller, requiring less food to survive. Because predators have such an impact on the rest of the ecosystem, it would be difficult to predict exactly how giant canids would affect everything else. Multiple apex predators can occupy the same niche through behavioral changes as already mentioned, as well as different hunting tactics, such as diurnal versus nocturnal hunting but the results could be catastrophic. If one predator is outcompeted by another and removed from the ecosystem, then the consequences could be drastic. Because different apex predators differ in their social structures and hunting techniques, their impacts on the prey species vary. In some parts of Russia where tigers have been reintroduced to some areas, they have pushed the wolf population out, either by physically killing them or outcompeting their prey. But because tigers hunt on their own and sometimes at different times of the day, there has been a ripple effect through the food chain. Prey species such as antelope and deer may change their behavior in response to large canids. If wolves became large, then they may not need to hunt in packs because they could take down big prey on their own. But if they still hunted in packs, then prey may need to adapt. In Siberia and India where tigers live, deer and wild boar are used to tigers being solitary hunters. If large canids lived in the same environment, prey would need to evolve or risk extinction. Many prey species can stand within minutes of being born. This enables them to evade predators straight away. They also give birth synchronously with other members of the herd, giving them safety in numbers. Overkill and pressure on prey populations may create changes, such as the birthing of multiple offspring rather than singles to keep their population stable. If canids were to become as large as tigers or lions, they wouldn't necessarily just replace the felids already there. Whether they managed to live alongside the big cats or not, we would see a shift in the ecosystems all the way down to the invertebrates and vegetation, right at the bottom of the food chain. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time!